guys, it's Bridie Rose here and for today's video I'm taking you to the launch event for Be More Chill. So as you know, I'm part of the Squip Squad where there's five of us and we're going to be creating content for the show. So the second event I get to go to is the launch event and from what I know it's going to be a selection of songs performed by the cast and also an opportunity to get to meet them and talk to them a bit more. So I'm really looking forward to it, it sounds like an amazing event and yeah, I'm going to take you along like I did before and you'll get to meet some of the cast and hopefully I can catch some of the ones I didn't get to catch last time. So yeah, super excited, let me take you inside. <laughs> hey guys, so I'm inside the kind of like fee tree area where they've set up for the performances today. It's really loud, but they've given us this really cute booklet. It's like a little notepad, it's adorable, and it says, I love play rehearsal. So the little quote from Be Will Chill. And I've also got a really cute pen with that. And over here, I've got a badge, which I'll show you. Okay, it's got a bit of a weird reflection, I'm going to have to show you a bit later. Um, but that says, I love play rehearsal and all that. So it's really, really cute. Oh, freebie. Also, I joined with... Oh my god, hey! <laughs> so, you're also part of Script Squad, aren't you? Yes, yes, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre, part of Script Squad. Very excited to be here. Yeah. I'm very excited because the first time I went, I was with no one, so it's nice to actually have like a friend. Yes, and I'm glad you know what you're doing. <laughs> what are you most looking forward to from today? Um, uh, seeing all of the songs from the show, because I've only listened to like the pre Broadway version of the album, yeah. so I know it's changed a lot even since then, so I'm really excited to hear it and get a little preview. Exciting. So I've been doing this for like a lot of people in this room for 30 years and every time we put a show up we dream a little bit. We're like I hope a lot of people get to see my show, hear the story for a long time. And what happens most of the time is you do your show for a run, three weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, whatever it is, and it's over. And you're like oh it was so special. Those people in the room got to experience it. Isn't that wonderful? Well be more chill for us has been the exception to that rule. This started in 2015. The story is based on Ned Vizzini's book. He wrote a bunch of books for young people and, and other people, and this is based on his book. So his legacy continues. In 2015, this show was founded at Two River Theater, small theater in New Jersey, and it ran for three weeks. And like most of the shows we do, it was over. Great. Well, the board of directors wanted to make do a fundraiser, so they did a CD. The CD, they made it, they put it out, nothing happened. Family and friends bought it. Now, fast forward two years. All of a sudden, I'm having lunch with Joe Iconis, who is the composer of Be More Chill. He's like, Jerry, you're not going to believe this, but there are 10 million streams of our music. Like, 10 million streams? How's that possible? That's impossible. I mean, all of a sudden people are listening to the story. So it's like, well, why don't we take this and do it off Broadway? We want to produce your first commercial show in New York. We love supporting new artists. Let's do that. So we do, we do that. We run for 10 weeks and it sells out. Wow, this is great. All of a sudden there's 30 million streams. People are hearing our story and it's unbelievable that we're going beyond the room and people are connecting to it. They're connecting to the story inside of this music they're falling in love with. From that off-Broadway, we got the invitation from the Sherwood organization to come to Broadway. We had a glorious six months on Broadway. Now, fast forward to today, we've had 350 million streams of this music. Absolutely incredible. And now, we are here in London. And the most perfect place for us to bring this piece is the other palace. Supports new artists, supports new composers, and new voices in theater. And this is what this show is all about. I'd like to introduce you now to our fearless leader, Mr. Stephen Brackett, our director. time to join us today. Uh, we're excited to kind of open our doors and give you a little sneak peek to uh, be more chill at the other palettes. Um, uh, you're meeting us at the beginning, sort of at the beginning of our second week of rehearsal. Um, it's been a really amazing opportunity for myself 
um, and my collaborator Chase Brock, our, our amazing choreographer, to come here and work with a bunch of artists from London. Uh, we have the amazing Louisa, uh, Louisa Green behind the piano. She's our MD. And we have a glorious cast that you'll meet in a second that's hiding from you behind this wall. <laughs> um, uh, it's been a really wonderful opportunity for us to take a piece that we feel like we know really, really intimately and add new voices to the room. We're, we're finding more questions by just having new collaborators on the piece that has really sort of in a beautiful way sort of kept opening up the piece to us. And that's a really lovely experience to keep working on something that keeps revealing itself to you over time. Of course, some of that is like, what references aren't going to play here? What are you going to be like, we have no idea about. So, but it's been a really lovely uh, moment for us to keep kind of cracking into it. I'm, I'm going to give you like a little like Wikipedia entry on Be More Chill kind of plot, and then I'll talk a little bit about our presentation. I'll try to keep it super, super quick, yeah? So Be More Chill uh, tells the story of Jeremy here, who is um, a high school junior. We learned the other day that people were like, what's a junior? Junior is um, uh, two years away from college or university, right? Um, uh, he lives on sort of the outskirts of the social um, hierarchy of the school, right? And not kind words, people would call him a geek, they'd call him a loser, they'd call him a nerd, right? He has one really close friend, Michael, and they have a really beautiful friendship, but Jeremy really has aspirations to make more connections with people at school. Jeremy is what I call a spiraler, right? He is an overthinker in every single moment, he's like, well, it could go wrong this way, or it could go wrong that way, or I could fuck it up this way. You know, like, he is a person who gets in his own way. And so we see that he has trouble with just basic everyday human interactions. So when he learns that there is a supercomputer pill from Japan that you can take it, it will tell you what to do, he's like, give it to me, I want it, right? Um, uh, so the musical follows the journey of Jeremy um, kind of learning from this pill who is helping him with everyday uh, human interaction and how to be what he says more chill, right? Um, uh, what I love about this musical is it takes this genre that's sort of familiar, this kind of like high school coming of age story, this kind of like aspiring loser story, and filters it through a heavy dose of sci-fi genre, which allows us a different access into that story. Um, uh, it's specifically a sci-fi genre about technology. Um, uh, and it's uh, it sort of explored that we don't want to be the musical that says technology is dangerous, right? Uh, we want to be the musical that is talking about technology isn't dangerous on our own, but becomes dangerous when we use it, right? Or has the potential to be dangerous with human interaction. Um, uh, but even sci-fi aside, I feel like this is a, a piece about humanity, right? It's a piece about, and I relate to this, about how we can let our own brains get in our way of achieving what we want to achieve. As an adult man, I have voices that are like, uh, you can't do that, you're gonna screw it up, right? Or don't get in the way. Those are voices that, that if we let sort of overtake our brains can really, really get in our way. Um, uh, and what this musical does is notes that that's part of what being a human is, right? That's part of what being alive is. Human, humans are flawed, right? And so it takes that and hopefully gives some sense of recognition that makes us feel a little bit more empowered over those voices in our head. Um, uh, the last thing I'm gonna say before I turn it over to our amazing cast is that this is a piece with a real profound sense of joy to it. Um, uh, it tells a story and honors the kind of pain that we go through in our everyday life, but spins it with a real sense of optimism and a sense of um, uh, that we can kind of uh, uh, work through these issues and has a real sense of um, really placing the value on human connection. We live in such a like scary moment, and it's so easy to feel scared every day. It's so easy to feel alienated every day. I feel really excited to be putting out a piece that is saying, form relationships, be brave, make connections, and does it in a really joyful way. Um, okay, spiel over, yeah? Uh, what we're gonna present to you today is three numbers from the show. 
Uh, the first number is the first the first production number of the show. Uh, we in the the number see Jeremy <coughs> counter what I've already talked about. We see him spiral. We see him get in his own way. It talks him from being at home in the morning, excruciating over the choice to say, "How do I get to school?" And then we sort of see him really kind of push against the rhythms of the school. So we like to call it sort of our crash course in Jeremy here. Uh, okay, please enjoy More Than Survive. Baller, just one 
some scales to count on If my nuts were any smaller They would be totally gone If I continue at this rate The only thing I'll ever do Is my MacBook Pro hard drive I don't wanna be gloomy No, no, I just wanna survive
second number happens right after this, actually. Um, uh, as you all probably learned from the first number, Christine, ha uh, Jeremy has a massive crush on Christine. Uh, I think he has harbored this crush for years and barely said a word to her. So in this next sequence, uh, we see Jeremy try to be brave, take a deep breath, and actually show up at the play rehearsal so that he can say hi to Christine. Um, uh, one of the things that I love about this musical is that it tells these sort of identity songs um, uh, through big production numbers, but then also through really beautiful, small, little intimate relationships. So I wanted to kind of have you see a little bit of that kind of fluctuation in the musical. Um, uh, in this song, we meet all of the aspects of Christine. She loves her play rehearsal. Um, uh, she's got a really kind of like vibrant personality, but she also has things that hold her back and things that scare her. And so we see the kind of balance of this um, uh, reflected in this next song. Yeah? Come on. All right, let's uh, enjoy I Love Play Rehearsal. This much. I get it, you're a virgin. First play rehearsal. Oh, you think I'm nervous about play rehearsal? It's okay. I'm a little jealous, actually. You never forget your first play rehearsal. Coming here is the highlight of your day. Of my life. <laughs>
takes us into Act Two, right? Um, uh, a brief little uh, plot getting into Act Two. So, right after this song, Jeremy learns about the squib, right? He takes it, um, uh, and it works. The squib appears. Now, the squibs are technology that scan your brain and um, take um, on the appearance of whoever they think that you'll take direction from or that you think is like really cool and will listen to. So the script appears in the form of Keanu Reeves, right? <laughs> Who Jeremy thinks is just like the coolest guy in the world. I love that it's like a little geeky, right? Yeah. Um, uh, so the script appears and immediately starts working on Jeremy and it works, right? He successfully navigates Jeremy um, into becoming a more commanding person at the school. While we're seeing this, we're also seeing Jeremy um, kind of have to cir circumnavigate his own instincts about um, uh, uh, moments and really kind of see him make some questionable choices. This, I think, is sort of epitomized where at the end of Act One, Jeremy chooses to basically block out his best friend Michael from his field of vision, right? The script tells him that in order to become this popular guy at school, you need to basically ditch your friend. You need to ghost your best friend, right? So we make Jer see Jeremy make that sacrifice. Act two starts, <coughs> we see Jeremy. He's officially made it. He's like one of the most popular kids at the school. We're at a um, Halloween party, a kegger at um, Jake's house. Jake is the most popular guy at school, right? Things go pretty badly at the um, at the party, right? Jeremy has an interaction with Christine. He thinks it's going really well. He sort of jumps the gun and becomes a little bit too forward with him, and he really sort of rejects her. Uh, she rejects his advance. Uh, Jeremy leaves the party, and the next day finds that the house has burnt down after the party, right? Um, uh, this sends the school into sort of like a tailspin, right? And everybody <coughs> enters school the next week really bummed, really depressed. Um, now, the little bit about the, the squip is that it's a piece of learning technology. So the squip is learning and becoming more powerful the longer that he's in Jeremy's life, and is learning not only about Jeremy, but the other kids at the school. So, Jeremy and Christine have another bad encounter at school, and it sort of sends the squip into this new revelation. The squip has a plan to say, in order to make you feel the most connected to everybody, we've got to squip the entire school, right? Now, this is something that obviously has really dangerous implications, and this next number is uh, the squip um, uh, sort of introducing this idea to Jeremy. Um, in this number, we also meet Jenna Rowland, who um, sort of like Jeremy exists on the outskirts of the, um, uh, the school community, except that she's a bit of a gossip, right? She likes to form really kind of like brief um, relationships with lots and lots of people, but ultimately doesn't really feel connected to anybody. Um, and we see her basically become the first person that Jeremy and the squip squip in their um, uh, 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 new formed plan to sort of take over the entire school. At the end, we get a little glimpse of what this kind of squip utopia, this squip society would be. Uh, so, please enjoy beautiful children. Ladies running shoes. There's gotta be enough squib. 
I'm sitting here for the entire school. Now put those pills in that beaker and fill it with mountain dew. Can you see the vision clearly, Jerry? People embracing and interfacing. for any of these beautiful people or any of the creatives of these, um, uh, let us know. If you want to kind of like schedule any sort of like little interview or anything, just uh, check out with uh, the people at Joe Winters and School House and they'll help um, facilitate that. Again, thank you for taking the time to be with us. Thank you very much. Thank you.